Oh, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for this great opportunity, Father God, to hear the word of God freely. And Lord, we thank you, Father God, that the Spirit of God will move in this place in a mighty way. And Father, I acknowledge in the midst of this great congregation that this is your ability and not mine. And this anointing, it shall be used to destroy yokes and remove burdens. But glory shall be given to you untouched in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that the Spirit of God does rest upon me for you anoint me to preach this gospel to the poor. You have sent me to heal the brokenhearted and preach deliverance to the captives and cover sight to the blind and preach the second year of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the words of prosperity for your people, you have placed it in my mouth for their ears, for all to experience your blessing, your love of prosperity <clears> on <throat> one accord and have all things in common. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 So if you have your Bible or your mobile device, <clears throat> lift them up high and repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. Say it's my word of God. And say it's the living word of God. And say it brings life to me. Say I can do what it says I can do. And I can have what it says I can have. And I can be who it says I can be. And turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Say my life is so much better. At thou heard, spoken, and practiced this word of God. Say this word of God. Now say devil. Say you don't look at your neighbor and say devil. Say, <laughs> <laughs> but say devil, <laughs> you are too late <laughs> because we are <laughs> believers. <laughs> amen, amen, <laughs> amen. This morning I want to talk to you about it's time to reset the dynamite. Amen. It's time to reset the dynamite, the dynamite of the Spirit of God. Amen. Time to reset. Somebody says, time to reset. Time to reset. You know, the, the Holy Spirit has been given for us to experience power. And that, that goosebumps for power. And that goosebump could be a part of because it's because of the power. But that's not all that's entitled to that. Amen. It's a whole lot that comes with that. And it's important that we understand the Holy Spirit has an assignment in the earth. Somebody say he has an assignment. His assignment is to bring forth manifestations, miracles, the supernatural. His assignment is to bring forth the demonstration of God's love through power. Somebody say power. power. And you know, when you're trying to use dynamite to, uh, when he talk about power, the word power comes from the Greek word is dunamis, where we get our English word dynamite. Or you watch Good Times, you see um, good, um, what, uh, J.J. says dynamite, amen. But dynamite is supposed to have an explosion, Amen. So the power of the Holy Spirit is to destroy the things that hinder you and bring forth the power of the things, watch it, by his power, the things that belong to you. So it's supposed to bring forth a rearrangement to our benefit, amen. But if you set off the fuse to dynamite, or you set the, the um, what you call those little dials and the timer for the dynamite, and it doesn't go off, nothing happens, then it needs to be reset. And as we look all across America, around the world today, we, we need to reset the, the dynamite. <laughs> that means in every church service, there should be an explosion. Right. Amen. Amen. After the word is preached, while the word is being preached, there should be an explosion. Something dunonymous is supposed to take place. Something in your spirit, in your heart, in your mind, your finances, somewhere in your life, something is supposed to happen. God, I felt that right there. Something that a man cannot do, something that only the power of God's spirit can perform, something, amen. amen. And that's something we have to welcome that someone, something, and as nothing happened, we got to look at, do we have it set right? Are we acknowledging him correctly? Are we, are, have we made a platform for him to, to perform and to be God's spirit in power and in demonstration? Amen? It's vital for us to realize, we must realize this, that God given us the Holy Spirit so we can have an experience of his love. But we don't welcome him, we don't acknowledge him, then those things are not going to happen. Matter of fact, the church would fail in this assignment if we don't welcome him back to the church. Amen. We don't welcome him back. I tell him, welcome him back that he's first place, he's first most in everything, and we allow him the, the opportunity to, to what? To move and to what? And to have his way. Yeah. Amen. To move and to have his way. I said to move and have his way. Because if he have his way, guess what? You will have your way. And we would know the way to take. 
You know what? He is the leadership of the church. He's the authority of God. He's the highest rule there is on this planet. He is the other Jesus on this earth. Amen. When Jesus was on this earth, he had to walk from place to place. You know, he went here, he went there. But he says that now the spirit of God is here. Then the spirit of God, he can indwell in all of us all at the same time. There were certain people who had to wait for Jesus to come, even though the word could do something if he spoke it. But then there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, how can I, there's a position that must be filled in order for power to be manifested. Amen. So let's go over here. Well, you don't have to go there. First verse is, um, is Revelation 2, verse 24. And Revelation 2, 24, he talked about let the church hear what the Spirit speak unto the churches. He said, hear what the Spirit speak to the church. Amen. And we know in this ministry the Spirit of God is speaking. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of God is speaking in the church. Now, you have all types of spirits that can speak. Yeah. Amen. But we want the Spirit of God to speak unto the church. I say you want the Spirit of God to speak into the church. And, what's, and, and one thing I do love and one thing I do hate, hear my heart this morning. One thing I do love that God has given me understanding and discernment of the Word of God. I can rightly divide it. I can tell, you know, when somebody, if they teach it correct or whatever, because he, he, he give me discernment in my spirit. But the other thing that I hate is that too many people are not teaching it correctly. And in conclusion with that, those who are here didn't like it. Amen. And then we say, well, what's going on? Look at the news. Look at that. All that's a result of what happened in the church. If the church received the power, we would affect the media. We will affect, you know, entertainment. We will affect, the, you know, commerce. We will affect, affect all of that. Amen. So it's so important to understand that we have to get yield to him because sometimes the church, we're just too late when it's time to pray. It has something already happened. Then we got we to gotta who shakala, kala, kala, and all that and, and try to reverse it when we could have prevented it. Because, see, God will let us know what's going on in the earth before it happens, and we get people out of it like he did with Abraham. Amen. So we got to hear what the Spirit of God said to the church. Amen. So let's go over here to um, the book of Mark, chapter 16. The book of Mark, chapter 16. And we're going to fasten our attention here on verse um, 15. He says this. He says, go ye into all the what? The world and preach the gospel to every what? Creature. He said, he that believe it and is what? Baptized shall be what? Saved. But he that believe it not shall be what? Damned. He says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. Now, we say speak with new tongues. That means speaking in tongues. We mean a new created way of speaking. Amen. He said, they shall take up, a, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall be what? Recovered. So I, it looked like there's some demonstration here. Then he says, so then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of, who? of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. What did they do? They preached. So they preached in their city. They preached in their nations. They, they went abroad, right? Everywhere. And what? The Lord, who was working with? The Lord working with them, doing what? Confirming the word. With signs and wonders following. So listen to me very carefully, child of God. That means that the Holy Spirit washes down. When Jesus said he's, the Lord is working with him, working with the preach word, he's working with him through, by the Spirit. Amen. So that means if I preach on healing, that's going to be a demonstration of healing. Because see, the Spirit's job is to confirm it. He's to confirm. He's the witness that this is so. So whenever, whatever I preach on, expect for the miracle to happen. Don't just let the miracle rest in your notebooks. Don't let it just rest on YouTube. Let it be a part of your life. Because the Holy Spirit, he's eager there to show you his muscles this morning. He's eager to show you that he can deliver your children. He's eager to show you that he can get you out of debt. He's eager to show you that he can get you out of anything. But we got to reset the power. We got to reset it. 
We got to understand who's incorporated, who's all participating when we pray, when we sow, when we, whatever we do in church. We're not just doing it by ourselves. You know, sometimes it feels like it's just yourself. He said, no, nah. he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Yeah. Wait a minute. But Jesus, you went to heaven. He said, no, nah, but I left you somebody. Yeah. Let, let me, I'm, I'm moving too fast. Let me, let me back up a little bit. Let me, I'm, I'm just, well, I'm going to tell you, man, I'm just, let, let, let's, let's, I don't, see, I, see, I don't want my excitement to be too exciting to the point that I don't impart into your life today. See, I know where I'm going. <laughs> Amen. I've been there a couple of times this morning. Amen. Look at this now. And so it's important for us to realize that whatever we preach on, we can have the experience of because the Spirit of God, Jesus, through the Spirit of God, will confirm it with a sign and a wonder. Isn't it amazing that we're the only, how can I say, we, we're the only people who, can, who is, uh, watching that have been authorized and been promised a sign and wonder, a fulfillment of what we say. Of the word of God. We, 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 that's been confirmed. It's already there. Amen. You know, we, we, I think it was Wednesday night we was talking. We are the only faith. We, have, we, we hold the only words that have an amen at the end of it. That, so the word amen means that agree, so be it. So no matter what your doctor says, no matter what the judge says, no matter what your school teacher says, they don't have an amen behind it. So it's subject to change to the amen because the amen belongs to God's word. If we abide in God's word, we have the amen because we got a sign and a wonder that he can confirm it with. So no matter what words you have heard, no matter what words you are entertaining today, change what you think, change what you hear. Hear God's word because only his word has an amen after it. All right, you listen to me now. Listen to me very carefully because we only took amen to the point. It's like this. When a judge said, um, when he sentenced and says something and slapped that hammer down, that's it. Nobody gets to talk. In a courtroom. But see, we got another judge. And we got another courtroom. And we have an attorney. Plus, we have witnesses. We have a jury. Watch this. So when we say something, no matter what the judge in the lower court says, watch this now. That's the supreme of the supreme. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And when he says something, we say what he said. There's an amen. There's nothing nobody can say about it because we got the amen. We got the amen. We got the amen. See, we don't, took it, we'll, we'll, we'll water down amen the same way we water down blessed. You know, we use blessing for food, you know, uh, when somebody sneezes, we, ha- we have to use it to empower us to po- prosper. You know why? Because we didn't allow the Holy Spirit to have rule in the church to give us revelation because he's the only one who can open the curtains. Not only is he the one who can open the curtains, he's the only one who can open your eyes too because the curtains can be open and some people can't see it unless he opened the eyes. Amen, somebody. I'm trying to stick with these notes, but I don't, I don't, that ain't working. Amen. So it's important for us to understand it. We have to reset the power. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we see here that the, the Spirit of God, Jesus by the Spirit of God, he confirmed the word with signs following. Amen. Now, let's go over here to the book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. He says this, he said, and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit unto Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Now, he taught in the synagogues, but notice something now, he returned with power. You see that? He, this is when Jesus went to fast in, in the wilderness for 40 days, okay? But he returned with power, because he, they, watch this now, you got to understand. Nothing is going to happen in the synagogues that needs to happen in the synagogue unless we, re- we return back with what? With power. Amen. Did you say, I got to go down to this church down here. And this church, they, they just a stiff neck as the, as the wood in the church. He said, I got to go, I got to return, but I got to return back with what? Power. I expect every minister in this church, when you go somewhere to minister, you're going you're gonna to return the power back to the church. Because, see, he went down to the synagogue. And know what he said? Notice what he says in verse 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord. You see that? (laughs) Verse 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, you hear me say that before I preach. Because I know there's no preaching without teaching and revelation unless I acknowledge the spirit of the Lord upon me. That's not for me. That's for both of us. That's not for me on. That's for all of us. I need him on me to preach to you. I need him on me to preach and minister to me. 
I'm going to tell you, one of the greatest things, one of the awesome things I get is to feel his power, his surge going through me when I teach. Amen. And then the other part is you feeling it resting on you. So the same power that I feel on inside of me, if you hear with open ears, understand the Holy Spirit is connected to this thing, you'll receive the same power. You feel it. Amen. He said, the Spirit of God is upon me because he has what anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he has sent me, the same Spirit of God, to heal the broken heart. That's what the, what the Holy Spirit is going to do. And to preach the deliverance to the captives. And recover his sight to the blind and set the liberty to the bruised. Now watch this. So if he's speaking that, now after that, the Spirit of God, watch it, he had to confirm all of that. Before signs and wonders. He had, he had to confirm that with signs and wonders. He confirms that. But Jesus acknowledged him. Man, God is so humble. I mean, I just this is the humility of God, the unity, the co-labor of them working together with that. And some people have problems in the church. Who's going to bring what and who's going to do what? And God said, I am God Almighty. And the Son of God come and say, I need the Spirit of God to come. And I acknowledge him. I'm, I'm telling you who he is. Amen. So you just don't want to just look at one person. You look at him. You look at all of us and how they all work together. Yeah. You mean to tell me church folks? Now, this church, our church is perfect. Amen. <laughs> I'm speaking about faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You mean to tell me that church people can't get along? Well, I've been doing that. Okay, well, you're not doing it right now. Yeah, yeah. Amen. The Spirit of God moves on. Yeah. I mean, it might be the point I probably come up here and say, hey, uh, well, Pastor Jones, you come up, you preach as well. If that's the way the Spirit of God had to lead, that's where he's going to lead. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, so it's so important that Jesus, he returned in the power of the Spirit. He returned in the power of the Spirit. He returned in that. Amen. Because he went to fast and he went and he was praying. Now, that means that you had to go and fast and pray to do that. Amen. You had to acknowledge him. Wherever you go, when you go to work, you acknowledge. When you go to work, when you return to work tomorrow, return with power. Because you know we need the Holy Ghost up on your job. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Matter of fact, sometimes the altar, you just want to come to, to, the, to the altar because you have a job. <laughs> okay, look at John chapter 7. Ooh, I must have grew a little tall. I got to raise this thing up a little bit. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. <sighs> John chapter 7. I'm going to rest our attention here on verse um, 38. He says this. Well, I'm, I'm going to read verse 37. In that last day, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He, he that drank it, believe it on me. As the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But he spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. I mean, died and resurrected from the dead. dead. So watch this now. So this is a tag team assignment. Okay. Now he's saying that the Holy Spirit is going to come. But, you know, he said he's going to thirst and then out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. But he said, but the Holy Spirit, had, he didn't come yet to be available for everybody. Now, he came a certain time. He rested upon certain prophets. They was moved by the Holy Spirit and they prophesied, but they had to wait on them. But now he's waiting on us because he's already in us. Amen. <laughs> Are you understand what I'm saying? See, and this is so important that we, we realize this because none of this battle is going to work right unless we include Jesus, the Word, the Holy Spirit. We got angels. We got we to gotta work. We got to work all this. We're not in this by ourselves. Amen. And he says this that he spake he of the Spirit which that day, that was they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not given yet because we understood that Jesus was not glorified yet, but we understand, we see here. That the Holy Spirit is so important for us. He's the one who quenches every thirst. He's the one, watch this now, you may have a thirst to do, to, um, how can I say, um, uh, may, let me put it this way first. You may be drying up because of, you know, uh, things you're worrying about. You may be drying up because of 
you know, concerned about your children. You may be drying out. He's the one who can quench the thirst there. Then you have a thirst, you have a desire. You might want to build a hospital or a school. He's the one who quenches that thirst also. See, see, we always think the Holy Spirit is for something only in the church and then only at home. But he's something out there for our community as well. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So you, I have a thirst to do certain things. And by his power, he quenches that thirst. He helps me to do that. In areas of my life where I'm dying, I'm drying, I'm dying of thirst. But it, it could be in, in any area. You know, it could be like, you know, I'm, I said in, in the area of entrepreneurship, all right? He quenches that thirst there. Amen. He helps me to understand things that I can't understand in my own ability. He helps me to do that. See, never say this, that you don't understand something. When you have understanding already on the inside of you. You have the understanding on the inside of you. You have the understander on the inside of you. You have wisdom on the inside of you. You have no, so you know all things and you can do them too. Isn't that amazing? We just got to acknowledge the one, reset the power. Amen. They give us the, the ability to do it, but we got to give him the cause. Yeah. Amen. All right, let's go a little further here. Let's look at John, verse 24. Same thing, chapter 14, let's look at 24. Did we ever go to 14? Okay, no wonder. All right, let's go to John 14 then. Amen. 14, 16. And Jesus is praying here. And as he's talking in verse 15, he said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Verse 16, he said, and I will pray the Father. He shall give you another what? Comforter. But he said another, right? That means the other Jesus. He said he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you for what? Forever. Ain't that something good? I don't know how the good it is for him. <laughs> he got to abide with He got to put up with us. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes you want to leave yourself, but you can't leave. Ain't that something? And the Holy Spirit said, I'm stuck with you. You know what he said? And since we are together, he said, I ask you to do one thing. He said, just don't greet me with your words. He said, don't greet me with your words. He said, don't say nothing out of what you hear on the news. Don't stop, stop saying anything out there. He said, I've come to bring God's word to pass. And so when you say something that I'm not authorized to bring to pass, he said, that grieves me. He said, I'm not authorized to bring sickness and doubt and under, unbelief and anger to pass. He said, so stop saying that. He said, if I'm going to buy, he said, let us at least work together. Let us live together. Let us all speak the same thing. The Bible said, and the Holy Spirit was given unto Jesus without measure because he spake only the word of God. We got to just stop saying that. Oh, my back just uh, killing me. Oh, my, my head about to fall off. So, oh, did, watch that. He said, okay, today that's going to be granted. Let your back, who got killed by that back? Who, your back hurts so much. It, it don't, your back don't kill you. And the Holy Spirit said, that grieves me. I can't bring that to pass. He said, you don't want it anyway. I'm so sick and tired getting on my last nerve. Okay, but you, you said that the last time, how many last nerves do you have? Look at this now. He says that he is the what? The comforter. Amen. Somebody said the comforter. Now, what is the comforter? The comforter is the one who relieves you from pain grief and agony and for being constrained amen that's what the comfort is. that's his assignment his assignment is to bring forth comfort in the area where you can't in the area where you're hurt in the area where you're restrained in the area where you can't do nothing he said i am come right now to comfort that area that's why it's so important that when there's a death in one's family you gotta understand i got a comfort to go so I can't grieve like the world grieves. I can celebrate. Why are you celebrate? I got a comforter. It's all right. It's okay. Because my comforter tell me that my loved one is sitting in the, in the witness stand in heaven, still watching me and cheering me all along. Yeah. Amen. Are you understand what I'm saying? This is so important for us to understand because if you don't acknowledge it, there's no comfort. Tell, say, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. So the church can do much more than we've been doing if we get why, first of all, get the religion out of the church. We don't have no religion here, but we still got to get the religion out of our minds. Amen. There's no, no, there's no religious preaching here. Okay? But then there's some still religious thinking. Amen. We got to get rid of the religious thinking. Let's look at the word religion. Let's, look, let's, let's just look at it a little bit. Let, let's look at the word religion. Let, I just want to look at it just, just a tad bit. It's R-E. What does R-E mean? 
Re means to return. What do legion mean? Huh? Many what? Men and demons. 2,000. So we don't want a religion. We don't want that. Doctrines of devils. So we think doctrines of devils is drinking goat's blood. and just, Now, the doctrines of devils is stuff that gets you all mixed up and confused. You follow me? This is doctrines of devils. Um, come up here, I'm going to throw this water on you, and, uh, you know, and uh, I'm going to give you some rocks from, from Jerusalem. Those rocks came from up 33rd Street. You don't know what I'm talking about. Those rocks came off of what, the Amazon, ain't it? Send you a green cloth. You don't need to go to church. Here's a green cloth, and here's a dollar, and send that dollar back with your dollar, and then send this. That's all doctrines of devils. Amen. You all just send me. <laughs> and all this crazy stuff that comes up. And see, people get so desperate that they accept, they accept the doctrine of a devil yeah. because it tosses you to and fro. Yeah. And, and you think, it won't, and it's not going to work, but you put all your faith on it. Yeah. Okay? Because the faith, on, the, the faith you have only works on the word of God. Let's, let's move on here. Amen. All right, look at this one. I right, know you go ahead and get rid of your green cloth and everything. I know you got a few of them. You got a few rocks that they got from Lowe's. You thought it came from, from the streets that Jesus walked on. No, it didn't. It came from Lowe's. Amen. No, I'm not going to behave myself. <laughs> get them rocks out your pocket, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. Now look at verse um, 20. 14 again 25 he says these things have I spoken unto you being yet present with you he said I, I was present with you but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you now Jesus even went to this point he said listen I got stuff I want to tell you he said, but you're not able to hear it now. Not that you're not available to hear. He said, you're not able to comprehend it. He said, because I got to wait for the comfort to come, the Holy Spirit. He's the revealer. And while him watching and revealing what I'm saying to you, you ain't going to understand it. So I wait for him to come, and then he's going to tell you what I, what I wanted to tell you. He's going to take up minds and my words, and he's going to speak them to you, and he's going to reveal you, and he's going to tell you about things to come. But he's going to lead you, and he's going to guide you in the truth of it as well. See, his job is also is to bring you on the path where your manifestation is destined, the destiny of your manifestations. You just can't pray and then stay at home. Because he will lead you and guide you and tell you to go somewhere. Watch this now. I was praying. I said, Lord, give me someone to bless today. Lord, give me a sign someone to just, just to bless. And so, I, you know, you know, I, I basically go to Starbucks and get coffee, right? Did I still go to? Yeah, I probably just went. I went to Wawa and got a sandwich or something. I, I, I might have got, I don't know. I, I went to Wawa anyway. And so I went to Wawa, and, this, and I was going to go over this lane. Holy said, go over this lane. I said, okay, I'll go over this lane right here. And so um, this young lady was at the register. I she had to be about 18 or something like that. And, and she was buying something, and she put the um, strawberry milk away. And then she, and she put a card in. They said, oh, take the card out, something wrong, and put it back in. You know, and then she they found out it could decline again. She said, well, put everything back. I said, no, uh -uh. I said, no, let me get this one. Let me get, I ain't want not to have money. I said, let me get this one. And I said, well, I'm going to pay for it. She said, for real? I said, yeah, I'm going to pay for it. I mean, she, it, it turned her to an audience again. Oh, yeah. And she smiled. But I missed out on some because I should have got that strawberry milk for it and gave me some money for gas, too. I missed out on that. And no, just strawberry milk and $10 for gas, I felt like, oh, man, my heart just dropped. But God still got a smile on. So watch this. This is what he said. He said, whenever you prevent misfortune for someone, he said, when they smile, say, God wants that smile. That smile is for God. And tell them thank you with that smile. That's all he wants. You follow me? See, don't get too on your Yeah, because you know, I got my bankroll, you know, because I got my income tax. You know, this is what I do. This is what I No, come on. Please, bro. Christ said, amen. Let them know God did it. Yeah. Amen. Say, God loves that smile and that thank you. You ain't got to go into nothing else. Just say, God loves that smile and that thank you. And then he'll teach you on the next level. Yeah. That girl was so happy. Amen, she was happy. Yeah. It wasn't a whole lot of money. She was just happy that God looked out for her. And, you, and when you teach people to give God the smile and give God the thanks, well, what happened? God said, let's take it up to the next level. 
All right, let's move on here. But what I'm telling you, because he, he, he led me to that. That's, that's the essence of this. He led me to that. And he is the leader. That's why when I get away, I go in and pray, and I let him talk to me. Give me I need some leadership. I need, how do I solve this? Because fussing at folks don't solve stuff. It just gets you all tensed up and muscles all, skin all tight and make you all ashy and everything. <laughs> So if you're real ashy this morning, and the Vaseline ain't working, Jergens ain't doing nothing for you, just, amen. So he is the comforter. He's the one who reveals things unto us. He showed things to us, amen. Matter of fact, Jesus, the things that Jesus did, why should he accomplish his assignment on the earth? But then after that, he said, now, as we spoke here, that the Holy Spirit is going to take over. But while Jesus was on the earth, he had to have the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The Bible says this, that, you know, we, we, if you don't know the scripture, just throw your pinky up. We'll, we'll, we'll go to the verse. I want to make sure you know it, okay? We basically go to a whole lot of scriptures on Wednesday. But it's no problem if you don't want it. We have to put it up on the screen. But the Bible says this, that Jesus... When he came to John the Baptist to be baptized, John the Baptist said, and there descended upon him the spirit like a dove. He didn't say it was a dove. He said like a dove because the way it came down upon him. But this is at the point of baptism. Are you following what I'm saying? John the Baptist baptized Jesus. At the point of baptism, the dove, the Holy Spirit, descended upon Jesus like a dove. And that's when Jesus' ministry began. That's when his ministry began. And when you look in the book of John, when, when you see that, or Luke or something like that, uh, John, when you see that, what happens is that after that, then Jesus go to Cana. And there's a marriage, there's a wedding there, okay? And at their wedding, watch this. This was right after that. Yeah. Then after that, watch that, and Jesus turned the water into wine. Yeah. But if Jesus would have been baptized, watch that, when the Spirit descended upon him like a dove, that water would have been water. Oh, yeah. You follow me? So watch it now. Now he has the Holy Spirit upon him. Now the water is turned to wine. Okay, my disclaimer. Don't go put your hand on your sink at home. <laughs> try to get some grape juice. You know, you, no, no, don't try to do that. Don't try to turn your, your bottles of water, you know, your, your deer park and your park deer where you go. Don't try to turn that to wine because that's not what he's talking about. I'm trying to show you. I had to say that because some people say, you know, they'll take stuff and they'll come up with their own, you know, revelation. <laughs> Let's move on. There's so many things I want to say, but I'm not going to say that. I'm just saying. Come on, Jesus. Turn this water. All 24 bottles. <laughs> Amen. Look at this now. So after he was um, the spiritual part, that's when he went to the wedding and turned the water in to wine. Amen. Now, let's look at the book of Luke chapter 24. Okay, the book of Luke chapter 24, and we're going to rest our attention here on verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But he said, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you are what? And do with what? Well, power from on what? From on high. Good Lord. He said, until you are, do, he said that until you are engulfed or invested with dunamis, with power. Miracle work. Right now, you have miracle working power on the inside of you. Miracle working power. And know what he said? And his power is coming from on high. Amen. You know, we could talk about dominion power all you want, but there ain't, no, ain't no dominion in that power. That, it didn't come from on high. Amen. It's just an electric company. That's all it is. Come trying to call themselves dominion power. You are, you're an electric company. We are dominion power. <laughs> now you hear what I said? I said we are dominion power. Amen. We the one who carry right now on inside of you, you and I house the power of God. Tell you this, I'm a powerhouse. I don't want to walk too fast, because I'm going to tell you, I, I, I am lit right now from the word of God. 
I am so like, woo, he all on me right now. I'm telling you that I just feel it. I just feel it. So I'm just walking kind of slow and come back over here. But I can, I can see you, but I don't really know if you're there or not. <laughs> <laughs> that don't even make sense. Let's move on. <laughs> Acts chapter 1. <laughs> Ooh, Lord, if you knew this, why I feel right here. Good Jesus. I my Lord. Like my mom used to say, make your knees weak like water. <laughs> now my sister say that. Now, amen. Look at this now. Acts chapter 1. And verse 4, he said, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, he, ye have heard of me. For truly, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days can. Now you got to understand this now, even when the book of Galatians, when he talk about Jesus being made a curse, because cursed man to hang on a tree. So that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Then he said, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So many times we said the blessing. But the promise of the Spirit, watch it, the blessing is in tied, is in, is incorporated with the promise of the Spirit. So therefore, if we don't acknowledge the Spirit, it's hard to walk in the blessing. It's so vital for us to realize this, that when Jesus died on Calvary Cross, and when we accept we accepted of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not only received the blessing, but we also received the promise the of the Spirit. See, the, 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 the prophets, oh, they waited. They wanted to give us the, but they couldn't have it until Jesus came on the scene. Yes, Amen. And right now, you and I have the blessing, and we have the promise of the Spirit, what yes. God promised to Abraham. Yes. You and I have it right now. I don't know about you, but that's a wake-up call. That's a wake-up call. That means you can live far beyond your check, which you receive bi-weekly or every week or once a month. You can live far beyond that. Because I don't believe that God called you and I to just keep working. He gives us a destiny. And all we're going to do is work. We, we work the job, but we didn't work the, the, watch this, the will. Listen to me. Can I, can, I, can I go here for a second? I say, I don't want you to waste all your time working on a job and not fulfill why you're supposed to be here. See, so you can't wait till you're 67 years old and say, Lord, use me. Now, you can do that, man, but why wait till you're 67? Wait till you get all, I'm going to wait till I get all my retirement, all my benefits. God said, I don't need none of that. He said, I give you benefits. Yeah. Amen. And I'm not telling you to quit your job. What I'm saying is that thirst and be watching to get more attention to the cause and your purpose on this planet and then watch the doors open watch the doors open so watch it you can't you can't really even think about yeah, okay thank you all that he want me to go back over he said I'm going I'm going to another going to another realm <laughs> okay I'm gonna obey you I'm gonna go over here because I won't waste your time amen oh Lord thank you Jesus. he tied up in here today amen <laughs> good Lord <laughs> feel like my mama in here amen Okay, so let's, let's go a little further now. He says that, um, verse 6, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the season in which the Father hath in his own power. That means his own authority. That's that authority. That's your lexical 14, excuse me, 1849, okay? He said, but ye shall receive power. That's your 1411. Amen. That's your dunamis. Okay, one is authority, one is ability. He said, but you shall receive ability after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and unto the other parts of the earth. A lot of people want to say a witness is this. A witness is one is that, you know, I'm going to tell people, I'm going to witness the people. That ain't what he's talking about. He's talking about you're going to be a witness of what I did because you're going to do it. Amen. You, you see, this is going to be the witness. The witness is not going to be, okay, come to church and hear my pastor. The witness is going to be this. I can, why, well, there's an anointing on me to preach. There's an anointing on me to lay hands. But that's how you put people on hold. You want them to come to church so your pastor can pray for them. And God said, now you be a witness. You lay hands on them and watch the power that has been endued upon you work through you so you be a witness. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm not the only one here who has power. You have power. Every, everyone in here who is a believer has power. So the power is the celebrity, not the preacher. Right. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. So this is the witness that he's talking about to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers. Right. Amen. Yeah. To cast out devils, heal the sick, 
preach the gospel, prevent misfortune last. That's the witness he's talking about. Loving the unlovable. Amen. That's the witness he's talking about. Not say, I'm just going to go out and witness. If you receive Jesus Christ today, you go to heaven. Oh, yeah, that's good. But it's another part to that. Give them some demonstration. Give them some demonstration. Y'all ready for this church? I believe you are. Amen. Look at this now. So he says that. But watch it. But this power, this witness also should work at, at home as well. So you just can't put your super cape on and fly out the house and do power or devil. You need some power at home. Okay, y'all won't hear that. Let's move on. Uh, amen. It's kind of weird. That's okay. That's all right. Got to have some power at home. Amen. Got to have some love at home. Got to have some prayer at home. Got some healing, some miracles at home. Matter of fact, you, to be scripturally correct, you're supposed to tithe when you're at home before you come to church. You're supposed to acknowledge God with the tithe at home. He said, before you come, before all y'all do y'all collection, he said, let you gather, you know, when you're at home, gather it up together, take care of the home. And when I'm at home, what I do, I take that tie and I offer, and I hold up to the Lord. And I say, thank you, Father. And I, I do my, and I say my confession. So I say, thank you. Then I come to church, and I, then I put it in the offering bucket. Right. Amen. So that's how you, that's how you do it. You, you do it at home, watching that. I said, my tithing to you is a witness that my, that Jesus loved me, that his love for me is real, that he lived it, that my high priest lived it. Amen. And God takes good care of me. He takes good care of me. I said, God takes good care of me. What I receive for a church, boy, over half of that I, is, is going back out. And know what? And I can't tell the difference. One day what I did, I began to add up stuff. Just, just one portion of whatever I give every week. I began to add it up and ask. So I said, well, well, how the rest of this money coming? That's much more than this. That, that, and then I got to pay this and I pay that. I said, I oh, I ain't going to try to think. I said, I know what it is, but mathematically it doesn't make any sense. See, if, if watch it now. If you keep looking at your check to do what you are doing, watch this now, and you don't, you can't look at it no other way. <laughs> Go away. You can look at it for your house. But when you look at God, you can do a whole lot with that check because God will put power on that money. And he started having that money start to talk, talking to other money and to all the opportunities that open other doors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then the next day, you know what you receive on your job, you'll give most of that away and still got much more in store. And that's why this, that's why this, you never ask a man for money. You ask God and you give. He said, and I'll provoke the man to give it to you. God don't want you to ask nobody for nothing but him. You ask God, you give, and it should be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shake down, and run over. Shall men, he will cause men to give unto your bosom. He'll cause men to do. You don't ask no man for no money. You ask God. God said, I'm your man. Otherwise, see, ladies, you mess up when you try to marry a man who have a lot of money. You need to marry a man who got a lot of God in him. He got a lot of God, he got a lot of money. You got to have a man who can go in there and pray, lay hands on that refrigerator and say, you shall not cease. From operating. You shall function forever. Amen. I, I put a warranty on you right now in the name of Jesus. And our area plans in this house, you're going to function to the capacity that we need you to function. No, I put a warranty guaranteed on this thing. Car going to run good. You have all the money, but you got all the curse. You got to use all the money for the curse. All right, let's, let's move on now. How y'all do that? Why y'all pull me like that? See, see that y'all doing that. I was trying to stick with this, y'all. I need me a man with some benefits. My children need their teeth clean. He got a uniform. I'm going to marry him. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm gonna, he, got a, he, got a benef- he got benefits. Amen. Mm-hmm. He might have them, but you probably won't have them. Though. Let me stop. Jesus, help me, please. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm get me out of this one. Get nervous. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. Whew, thank you, Lord. Verse 38. Whew, thank you, Lord. I'm just going to elaborate on this some. Basically, when you, when you see this, we understand that the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Ghost, is not only to us, but also for our children. He says that right here in verse um, 38. He says that repent. 
Peter said to him, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. It's for your children, too. This just just ain't a grown folks thing. It's for your children, too. Amen, Amen somebody. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Acts chapter 19. Mm-hmm. I, you, you know something? You remember when Jesus, oh, Lord, in, in the book of, <laughs> book of Luke chapter 4, that after he said the Spirit of God rests upon him because he had known him to preach the gospel to the poor sin, he had the book of the heart, preach the liberty to the captive, come to sight to the blind. And you know what the Bible said? And the Bible said he sat down. I know why he sat down. Because, Lord, I need to sit down right now. Good God, boy, I tell you, I'm for real. I can't stand up. Oh, God. Excuse me, but I got to sit down. <laughs> My God, man, I tell you. This thing is heavy right here. We all right, y'all? Y'all sit down. You look at me like that. Why well, can't sit down? Got me doing all the work. I'm here. He's sitting down. You sitting down, too? Look, look back at you. Hey, man. Came off here. I ain't scared of you. 19. <laughs> 19, Acts 19, and verse 2. This is Paul saying, where he saw some disciples coming from Ephesus. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said to him, we have not so much heard about in the Holy Ghost. And they said, what do you mean you didn't hear about the Holy Ghost? And Paul lifted up his hand. And they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But notice something. He said, since you believe, have you received the Holy Ghost? So he's telling me that the Holy Ghost is necessary for you believing. Yes. Amen. It's necessary for you believing. You see, I'm propping, don't you? I'm kickstanding. I ain't going no, I ain't going far. Don't worry about it. Amen. <laughs> so you see that believing is not believing unless you have the Holy Ghost. There's things you can't believe from God unless you got the Holy Ghost. And Paul is saying, I want to make sure you got what you need. He said, you are disciples. You're coming from Ephesus. He said, I'm about to go to Ephesus. Watch this now, a a couple of books down the road. He said, but you need to have the Holy Ghost to believe everything that God says. Because some things will be said to you will be strange. And the Holy Spirit said, just listen and say you receive and listen to it again. Then he'll take that, watch it now, while you're speaking it and while you hear that, and he'll just work with that thing on the inside of you, watch it now, until the light shine. And then the light will come. He's the one who cuts the lights on. He's the one who pulled the curtain back so you can see it. Because he's the one who show you why tithing is poor. He's the one who show you why forgiving is poor. He's the one who show it. He got to show, he got to show it. He got, if you don't see it, you can't believe it. Are you understand what I'm saying? So we got the reset the power. You can't go to the Bible with your knowledge because you graduated from high school early. That don't make you smarter than God. We go, I could go and do this Bible, show you some stuff in the book of um, um, Exodus. You won't understand a word I'm talking about. But if you got the Holy Spirit, you're going to understand it. And there are things, there have been some, some verses, some scriptures, the Holy Spirit, I mean, it was in the Bible, I said, Lord, I don't understand that. I said, show me plainly, show me that. He had me study this and that and pray. Next time, boom, the light come on. Yeah. And he don't tell you, I'm about to cut the light on. He just cut the light on. Yeah. You know how your parents used to do <coughs> when you're supposed, you're supposed to be up all ready for church or for school? They just come and cut the light on. You don't know where they're coming? Yeah. He comes in, he just cut the light on. If you acknowledge him, he'll do wonders in our life. Yeah. Yeah. He will do super wonders in our life. Amen? <coughs> now, <coughs> let's look at this now. So he gives us that power and that right to believe. (coughs) Amen. Now let's go over here to um, John 16. (coughs) Amen. If we have any bottled water back there, I appreciate it. We have any. (coughs) Amen. John 16, verse 7. <laughs> and, and verse 7, he said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him what, unto you. So Jesus said, <coughs> it is better for you, expedient. He says, it's more beneficial for you 
if I go, because if I go, I can send him. So look at this now. So that means that since he sent them, now it's expedient for us. I mean, that he comes to make our life better. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He comes. And you see how we don't take the Holy Ghost, we just put them into tongues and roll on the floor and, and, and jump in and dance. We, oh, oh, they jump there. Oh, that's the Holy Ghost. That's not the Holy Ghost. That's not the, I mean, it can be a part of how they feel, thank you, sir, about him being on them. But that's, that's not all. See, we don't, we, don't, we don't limit him to, you know, dancing and, and falling now in the floor. He said, I come to give you understanding. I come to lead you to manifestation. I come to show you something that you don't understand. I come to walk you to a destiny, watch it now, and by your prayers to bring you to that what you, you yearn from God from. He's your nudger. He's the one who said, get the moving. Come on, let's do it now. He's the one who showed, matter of fact, notice this now. You remember how, you know, when you was raised up, I don't know about you, but when we was raised up, you know, mama, she could take a little piece of meat and a little piece of that, and a little piece of everything. And you, next day you know you got a meal at 6 o'clock p.m. Yeah. And not only 6 o'clock p.m., but every day 6 o'clock p.m. Yeah. Yeah. How did she do that? The Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Come on, we'll ask for help in that kitchen. And, Lord, I need to feed these children. And the Holy Ghost will get on mama and come up with recipes. And come up with stuff. They will feed that family and take care of that family. Then we were very well fed and make sure we fed every day at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So you women out here that can't cook, the Jiffy generation, you got every day you got to whip it and click it and sit 20 minutes. No, no, he'll teach you how to cook. Yeah. Excuse me. That's your time for you to have your sea log. Because some of these women here, they can't cook. You need to learn how to cook. <laughs> Tell me you won't be married. You can't cook. What he? Uh, uh, you okay? <laughs> Amen. Look at this now. How I cook? You gotta do something. Amen. I'll keep you starving. Now, we know he's the one who eliminates the poor oh boy, I tell you, boy, good Lord, I feel it. Some kind of good up here. <laughs> well, I'm trying to tell you, man. Okay. No, no, I ain't got no. some, some, It's for something. It's for something. God did this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. With Jesus, who was that, Lord? It was, um, it was, it was Peter. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It was Peter. <coughs> In the book of Acts, come on, stand on your feet right quick. Watch this now. It was Peter in the book of Acts. And Peter preached to them salvation for their family to be saved. And Peter said, why I spake these words? He said, the Holy Ghost fell on Because the Holy Ghost is connected to the words. He's the one who brings the manifestations, the salvation plan. Y'all just saying what I'm saying? And I believe this power is resting on me right now for something to fall up in here today. Amen. It's not for me to just keep sitting down and standing up and sitting down. This is something that's peculiar today. We want God wants you dripping in this today. He wants this to be on your business. He, he wants this to be on your family. He wants it to be on your possessions. He wants it to be on everything. And Jesus, now, I'm preaching to you right now your salvation. I'm preaching to you right now that God has your back. I'm preaching to you right now that he's your healer. He's your deliverer. And everything in your house is going to be better than okay. It's going to be expedient now for your home in Jesus' name. And as I speak these words, I decree that the power of the Spirit rests upon you. In Jesus' name. What is on me, be upon you. Be on the camera, be on YouTube, be on, on my voice. Everybody who hears, even all those who come in contact with you today will experience his power. In Jesus' name. When you go up to that register, they keep messing up stuff because they're they, they shaking. They can't push the buttons right because you're in line. 
They slow, they're not in training. There's power up there interrupting something, letting you know that power is there. And talk to that person where they need healing, they need prayer. What is it? Let the power begin to perform. Don't just sit there and brag about them, shake it because you're there, because God wants to do something there. And those of you that are sick and you tired of being sick, you don't want to be sick no more, let this be your day. Come to the altar. Let this be your day. Come to the altar. Let this be your day. Let this be your last day of being sick. Let this be your day. Thank you for tuning in to the Increase in National Ministries broadcast today. We pray that the Word of God has richly blessed and transformed your life. To know more about us, you may visit our website at increaseinternationalministries.com. Or connect with us on Facebook at Increase, capital I-N-T, apostrophe L, Ministries. Or contact us by phone at 804-658-4896. Remember, wherever you go, may increase in favor flow.